Hey guys, Mike Rivers with the Rivers Group at Compass Real Estate. I am a Boston area native and a local real estate advisor. And in this video, I'm going to be diving into the pros and cons of Boston's Back Bay neighborhood. So whether you're considering moving here or you're just a little bit curious about the area, this video should give you some insight about not just one of the city's most popular neighborhoods, but also one of the most sought after neighborhoods in the entire country. And if you think you might need some help navigating the buying or renting process anywhere in the city of Boston, please feel free to give me a shout. Send me a message at the number below. Let me know what it is you're looking for. I'll do everything in my power to help you out. I grew up 10 minutes from here. I have lived and worked in Boston since 2007 and I absolutely love being a resource for people who are moving around anywhere in the area. So give me a shout, let me know what you're looking for. I'll do what I can. In the meantime, let's dive into the Back Bay neighborhood. So the Back Bay is located on the south side of the Charles River, just to the west of Beacon Hill, to the east of Fenway Kenmore, and to the north of the South End. The Back Bay is known for its elegance, its affluence, its prime location, and its world-class shopping, but it does come with a higher cost of living. The prices here are on the steeper side compared to other neighborhoods, so we'll get into that in a few minutes, but with everything this area has to offer, it's pretty easy to see why this is a desirable place to call home. The Back Bay is this perfect microcosm of Boston's unique historical and cutting edge modern sides coming together. You get to experience old and new at virtually every single intersection of this neighborhood. There's all these little moments of buildings that were built 175 years ago and ones that were finished a month ago that are skyscraping towers overlooking the entire Back Bay area. But it's pretty amazing and pretty interesting as you're walking around the neighborhood to witness these little moments of this juxtaposition of old and new. So that is something that makes this neighborhood super interesting. Back Bay was actually a bay at one time, and like much of the city, the wetlands were filled in for development. Most of Boston's early landfill projects were made possible by cutting into the natural hills that were once here on the Shawmut Peninsula, but by the time the 1850s rolled around, they had already flattened many of those hills, with a couple of exceptions, and they needed to start borrowing land from outside the city itself. In this particular case, from the nearby town of Needham, just nine miles away. The scope and planning of this project made it possible to lay out the streets in a sensible grid compared to other historic areas around town. The Back Bay has come a long way since then, and I have to say it's personally my favorite neighborhood of Boston. Now, there are a lot of great things that Back Bay offers and a few drawbacks as well, but let's start off on a positive note and talk about the Back Bay's location. So as I talk about location here, you want to keep in mind how compact Boston is compared to other major cities out there. It's not nearly as sprawling as like New York City, LA, or many of the other major cities in the US. It's a lot more manageable in terms of walkability, just getting around in general. So you just want to keep that in the back of your head as I discuss the location of not just the Back Bay, but all of these other neighborhoods. Now that said, it does not get much more central than the Back Bay in terms of its proximity to the historic downtown and financial districts, world-class shopping, Boston's many prestigious schools, and some of the best hospitals in the world. Not to mention the Charles River and some of the best green spaces in the entire city. You are just as close to Fenway Park and the South End here as you are to the Italian restaurants of the North End and the energetic summer scene at Boston's waterfront. So while the Back Bay itself does offer a very long list of its own great features, its central location and proximity to the other great neighborhoods of Boston might be one of the best features of the Back Bay itself. The next pro about the Back Bay is its ease of transportation and commuting. Now the Back Bay offers access to several train lines for getting around the city, including Back Bay Station, where you can access not just the orange subway line, but also the commuter rail and Amtrak trains to virtually anywhere in the country. The Green Line has four stops in the Back Bay at Arlington, Copley, Heinz Convention Center, and Prudential. Bus lines are also available in this part of the city as well, not to mention taxis and plenty of ride sharing. On top of that, you have bike sharing and scooters becoming slowly more and more used in the city, and the roadways are actually starting to catch up with these many green initiatives. Also, commuting to and from the Back Bay by car is easy enough with its access to Interstate 90 and 93. A parking space here won't cost you anything if you are a resident and get a permit from the city. The tricky part is actually finding a vacant parking spot for residents. If you are someone that likes a bit of structure, keep in mind that this is virtually the only area in the city of Boston where the roads are designed in a sensible grid system. If you've ever driven in the rest of the city, you'll realize pretty quickly that the master planning for the roadways was most likely done by this individual. <laughs> 
Next up is education. The Back Bay offers easy access to many of the most prestigious schools in or around the city of Boston. You are just minutes from MIT, Harvard, Northeastern, BU, and countless other colleges and universities. These great schools are one of the primary reasons that Boston is an absolute powerhouse in the STEM fields, among many other industries. Now let's get into the amenities. The Back Bay has a constantly growing array of restaurants, cafes, world-class shopping along Newbury Street and Boylston Street. And there is also plenty of shops and restaurants in the Prudential Center. That's connected to shops at Copley Place through a long array of indoor corridors. And these shopping hubs draw people in from all over the world. So if you love spending money, this is a great place to do it. With indoor and outdoor options, you can blow your money just as easily on a cold rainy day as you can on a warm sunny day. And when it comes to groceries and daily essentials, you'll find convenience stores and markets scattered throughout the neighborhood. There are a bunch of great local shops like the Lucas Market, but you do have some supermarket options in Star Market and Trader Joe's, and there is a Whole Foods just outside the Back Bay into the Fenway neighborhood. And for healthcare, you are just down the street from some of the top rated hospitals in the country, like Brigham and Women's where I was born, Mass General, and Beth Israel Deaconess. This neighborhood is perfect for hypochondriacs, accident prone people, and of course, people who are legitimately unwell. So as you can see, the amenities here are virtually endless. Next up, the architecture. Whether you are a true architecture buff or you just appreciate a beautiful building when you see one, the Back Bay has some very impressive historic buildings in addition to some of the most contemporary and shiny new architecture in the city. You have these classic red brick row houses and brownstones in the residential areas, and just standing in the middle of Copley Square, you are virtually surrounded by iconic buildings, including Trinity Church and the John on Hancock Tower, then you have the Fairmont Copley, which you would probably recognize from the several movies that it's featured in. And you also have the Old South Church and the Boston Public Library, which are two other incredibly impressive buildings. If you want to read, work, or study in some beautiful places, I always recommend people check out the Courtyard and Bates Hall at the Boston Public Library. As much incredible exterior architecture as there is to take in in the Back Bay, many people don't realize that some of these beautiful interiors are also publicly accessible. Then you have these modern commercial and residential skyscrapers going up on the more southern edge of the Back Bay, a little bit set back from the river, offering some of the best views in the entire city. And for a price, anyone can take it all in from View Boston at the top of the Prudential Tower. Between old and new, there is no shortage of impressive architecture in the Back Bay. Now let's jump into the cultural scene and entertainment. And as I just touched on, the Back Bay neighborhood is home to quite a few iconic landmarks, which are certainly a part of the cultural scene here. And there is always something happening at the Heinz Convention Center, the Back Bay Event Center, and over at the Charles River Esplanade and Hatch Cell Concert Venue, where every 4th of July people come from all over to watch the Boston Pops and the Independence Day fireworks on the Charles. Right on Boylston Street, just outside the Boston Public Library, is the finish line for the Boston Marathon. Additionally, you're going to find the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum and the Museum of Fine Arts right down the street, offering endless artistic inspiration. And when it comes to entertainment, there's always something happening from concerts and theater shows to events at the Prudential Center and Fenway Park, along with the countless open spaces in the area. Back Bay's open spaces are personally something I absolutely love about the area. Cities can feel very congested in certain areas and really have that concrete jungle feel. And there are many areas of downtown Boston that do feel like that, but the Back Bay offers a little bit of relief as it's virtually surrounded by parks and rivers and the inside of the neighborhood doesn't feel super claustrophobic or overwhelming. The Emerald Necklace, which is a network of green space running through much of the Boston area, begins on one side of the Back Bay at Boston Common in the Public Garden, continues right through the middle of the Back Bay via Commonwealth Avenue Park and on the other side you have the Back Bay Fens which is a massive area of parks and riverways technically in the Fenway Kenmore neighborhood. Outside of the Emerald Necklace there are some small parks and publicly accessible green spaces in the Back Bay and while they are building more and more every day the skyscrapers here are just a little bit less dense than they are in the middle of downtown Boston so the neighborhood feels a lot less like an oppressive concrete and glass jungle and more like a well thought out urban neighborhood. Now let's dive into some of the drawbacks about living in the Back Bay. Now, thanks to everything that I just discussed, the Back Bay happens to be one of the most expensive neighborhoods in Boston. And in 2021, the 02199 zip code of the Back Bay was actually the second 
most expensive neighborhood in the entire country. There are some more modest options in some of the older townhomes, and there are some high-end luxury options and full-service condo buildings with endless amenities included. But here are some of the numbers for the last 12 months to give you an idea of what you're looking at for purchase prices and rental prices. So for sales prices in the last 12 months, the median sales price for a studio is $529,000, one bedroom median sales price, 769,500, two bedroom median sales price is 1.7 million, and the three bedroom median sales price is 3.7 million. And for rentals, the median rate for a studio is $2,450, and they range from $1,700 up to $7,000. The median one bedroom rate is $3,200, but ranges from $1,900 to $8,500 a month. The median two bedroom rate is $5,200, but ranges from $3,200 a month to $25,000 a month. The median three bedroom rate is $8,800 a month, but ranges from $4,100 a month to $23,000 a month. Again, those figures are from the last 12 months prior to when this video was posted, and I pulled the figures off MLS pin, so it should give you a pretty accurate idea of what you're looking to pay when you move into the back bay. Drawback number two is the lack of parking in the area. And the Back Bay's central location and amenities make it an incredibly sought after place to live and a huge tourist destination. Parking is always going to be a factor here. Purchasing a private parking spot in this area can range from $80,000 to $300,000. But as I mentioned earlier, residents can park for free with a neighborhood parking pass. Although it can be pretty competitive when it comes to actually finding a spot on the street. The winter can make it even more challenging as snow becomes a factor. Monthly parking passes to a nearby garage is an option that's going to run you around four or five hundred dollars a month but know that if you plan on parking at a metered or zone space your limit is usually two hours max and the boston transportation department gives very few breaks when it comes to parking beyond the allowed time or in a space that's not meant for parking so that's definitely a factor to consider before moving to the back bay. Drawback number three is the traffic. And this is going to be a common theme for many of the areas in Boston. While traffic can be tough in Boston in general, the back bay's central location makes it particularly difficult to navigate, especially during rush hour and on those days where there is a special event like the Boston Marathon or parades for a professional sports team, although those are fewer and fewer since Tom Brady's departure from the area. But when they do happen, it does make things a little bit hectic for city drivers. The weekend of the 4th of July also creates some challenges, and now every Sunday during the summer, Newberry Street closes at either end to vehicular traffic to open up for pedestrians to walk the streets with a little bit more room to navigate. The one redeeming quality here is the streets are virtually the only ones in the entire city laid out in a grid, so it makes things a little bit simpler for those unfamiliar with the Boston area. Now the traffic can be a bit worse in the area at the beginning of each month, especially in September when students and people moving into the city tend to test the durability of the low bridges on Starrow Drive by plowing moving trucks into them almost daily. Yes, this does really happen, especially in September, and it really is every single day. Now the next drawback I'm going to discuss is the noise in crowds. And this is more of an issue in some areas of the Back Bay than it is in other areas of the Back Bay. Now Newbury Street and Boylston Street are extremely busy streets and popular tourist destinations. So at rush hour and during peak tourist season, obviously there's going to be more foot traffic, more crowds, and a little less space to stroll on the sidewalks. But as you get further north towards the Charles, the roads become increasingly residential and quiet. Newberry Street and Marlboro Street are only two blocks from each other, but feel like completely different neighborhoods based on the amount of street noise and the number of people strolling around. But once you get along the river to Starrow Drive, the traffic noise picks up again, as this is a main access point from I-93 into many of the major areas of the city. So those are some of the main pros and cons of the Back Bay neighborhood. And even though that's just the tip of the iceberg, hopefully it gave you a little bit more insight about what you can expect if you were to move into the area, some of the benefits of the area, as well as some of the drawbacks, and might help you make a decision about which area of Boston you might want to end up in. And if you have more questions about the Back Bay or questions about any other neighborhood in town, please feel free to reach out, give me a call at the number below, send me a text, or fill out the form in the description to let me know exactly what you're looking for right now. I'm happy to be a resource for you. We love helping people that are following our YouTube channel. So reach out anytime, let me know what you need. I'm happy to help. And again, thank you guys for watching the video. Hopefully this taught you a lot about the back bay. Take care.